All right, starting out, we're just going to give a quick recap of some of the things that we've talked about in case some of you are lost out there. So we write C sharp code and we can do this inside of any text editor, but we tend to do it inside of Visual Studio for this particular course. You don't have to, you could do it in Notepad. And if the computer was just to take this text and run it in something, just open it and try to use it, it would be complete gibberish. It would do nothing for anybody. It doesn't understand it. This is not inside of computer talk. This isn't machine language. This is not machine code. So in order for this to become machine code, there's a man-made program that takes that gibberish that we make, the C sharp, and it translates it into machine language. It translates to the machine code. We've been calling him Mr. Translator for the sake of just these tutorials so far. Not actually his name, but it doesn't matter. We're going to continue calling him Mr. Translator for now because that's just what I want him to be called because that's what he does. He takes this and he translates it into machine code. However, in order to translate this, he's not smart enough to do that by himself. He actually has to look things up. And that's why we follow rules when we're making this gibberish because we follow the rules of C sharp when we're making this gibberish and he knows those rules of C sharp. He goes, okay, you're using the rules of C sharp and he, so he'll look it up. It'll give him back information and then he'll use that to translate this gibberish over here. So a lot of what we do, a lot of what we program, a lot of the rules that we follow are based off of this and how he was made and what he does. And that's why I keep on bringing Mr. Translator here up because in order to understand how we program and why we do things that we do when we're programming, we have to really understand him. But on top of that, there's actually another reason we do the things that we do inside of programming. And I've already kind of brought it up a few times when I say that we need an extra space between words and equal signs and stuff like that. Cause that's not for Mr. Translator's sake. That's for the sake of other programmers. We do that to keep ourselves in the habit of writing code that's readable. So when we're making code, we do it for this guy's sake, for Mr. Translator's sake. And we also do it for other people's sake. In other words, we do it for readability. And by the way, other coders in a lot of cases include your future self. When you're tens of thousands of lines of code down inside of a program, you're not gonna remember what you were doing when you made a certain variable forever ago. So if you named it something that's readable, that tells you what its purpose is and everything else that you need to name and you tell it what its function actually is, you give it a good name and you write some comments in your code and you space things out well, it's going to make your future self have a much easier time understanding the code that you wrote forever ago. Now, starting back in the Visual Studio, we're just going to start off clean. We're going to erase everything that's not our comments, not void start. We're starting clean again because we want to really display the difference and variables here. So let's talk about a scenario. Let's talk about a time when a player has only one health left and they're about to get healed and they're getting healed as we talk. And so we're going to display inside of our debug.log that they got healed. So let's start off first. We need an HP amount first. So go ahead and make a player health string and go ahead and make it set to one. He only has one health left. It's a desperate situation, guys. So go ahead and make that variable now. Okay, so Mr. Translator, to know that he's supposed to be making a variable, because right now he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. Code is an open book to him. We just go ahead and write string. Okay, we're going to make that. We're going to make a player health string, and we're going to set it equivalent to one, because player health is really low, and he's in a desperate need of a heal, which we're going to make right here. We're going to say heal amount, and we're going to set that equivalent to 100. You know, he's about to get really healed up. And then we're gonna actually have a final health. We're not gonna set it equivalent to anything right now because when we go down into here, we're gonna actually say final health is equivalent to player health plus the heal amount because we want to add those together like we would in grade school. So we just do it like we normally would. We take one amount and then we add another amount to that, right? So let's debug.log this now. Debug.log, player is healed, now has debug.log, final health, right? So what's this gonna do? Let's go back into Unity and see what happens here. So we're back into Unity, it's fully loaded. Let's hit the play button and player is healed, now has 1100 health. Now, guys, I don't know if you remember, but we only had one health to start with and we were healed for 100 health. Woo! <laughs> so, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Let's get out our calculator. 
one plus a hundred should equal 101. Okay, so what's going on? Is Unity messing up? What's going on here? Well, guys, let's talk about this. So the thing is, when you have a string, the strings are incapable of math. They do not do math. So let's talk about this final health line right here. Mr. Translator sees final health, right? He reads through this. He starts at the F. He goes all the way to this H right here. He hits the space so he knows that this is one single word. Then he looks into his definitions and he goes, oh, wait, that's actually right here. I actually know this definition. We made that. It's a string. And then they do this equal sign. Okay, so they want me to grab out that box and they want me to put something into this box. Okay, cool. So he sees player health and heal amount and he sees this plus sign. So first he sees player health, grabs this value out because he knows you don't want the box. He knows that you want the value. You. So he grabs this out and he basically does this. He makes a copy of it and then he puts it down here. He doesn't take it out of the box. He makes a copy of it out of the box and puts it down here. He then goes, okay, and they're going to add something to that. Okay, cool. And then he sees hill amount and then he goes, okay, cool. Let's make a copy of this and let's put that right here. Okay, plus means that they're going to try to want to add these together. Now, when you add together strings, he goes, I know that they have a string right here. And they have another string right here, so that's okay. You can have a plus sign right here. When you have a plus sign in this context, when you're working with strings, that means you're trying to make a bigger string. So what he does is he takes this out, he takes this out, and he makes it into one big string. He takes the strings and he puts them together, and it becomes this. This is what ends up happening. It becomes 1100 like so. That's how strings function. Now, there's a lot of implications of this. That means that we can actually just go plus final health, and that will still work correctly in this case if we just got rid of the debug.log, which means that we don't have to write debug.log every time, right? If I go back into Unity now, it'll just straight up say it all in one line now instead of doing it the way it was doing it before because we added that string onto this string. Problem is, it's still doing math like complete poo. That's why we need to actually go into another type of variable. We need to start working with something else because really you don't just make boxes. Boxes only hold so many different types of things, right? For instance, if you were holding water, you wouldn't put that into a box because if you try to put the water here into a box, it would just leak right through, right? Well, in the same kind of way, different types of data requires different types of variables. Mr. Translator automatically assumes that you're going to do different things based on the type of variables that you have, and he'll work with those different types of variables in different ways. And when you're working with math with whole numbers, you have a very specific type of variable that we use. And it follows the same kind of format. We use a keyword, we name it, and then we can either end that there, or we can set an equal sign, and pick the value right off the bat. The keyword in this case is the first thing that changes. So we're gonna go ahead and write int there, and in player health is still cool. That's a cool name and that works. And then we do equals and then you see the squiggly line. And again, it has that Microsoft Word identity crisis. The problem here is that it automatically knows that things inside of quotes are strings. That's telling the system that's a string. You can see it cannot implicitly convert type string to int. Well, in order for it to be an int, instead, all you have to do is get rid of the quotes. And that number is automatically an int. You see struct system dot int 32 is written in there. That is cool. That is what we're looking for. That is an int. That is an integer, a whole number. So as a challenge, why don't you go ahead and convert the heal amount into an integer as well? All right, so let's do that. We'll make this int and we just simply take off the quotes and that's okay now. And then we can go ahead and go down here and go player health plus hill amount, right? Because now it can do math. But again, we get those ugly red squiggly lines and we look over here and it says cannot implicitly convert types int to string. But these are ints, guys. Why is that happening? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out how to fix this problem. Okay, so this error is occurring. So let's read this from left to right. We have final health. So he grabs this box right here. He looks it up. He goes up here and he goes, okay, you're grabbing me this string box. So he goes his equal signs and he's okay with things up to here. He's like, okay, that's completely fine that you want to put something in the string box. But then the first thing that he sees is an int. He goes, wait guys, that's not okay. This box is not meant to contain 
an integer is meant to contain strings. Why are you doing this? And then he sees that you're adding together two integers. He's like, okay, you can add these together. That's cool. But that doesn't help me. I can't do anything with that. That doesn't go inside of this box. So we simply change the type of box that we have by putting int up here. And then all of a sudden that error goes away because that's the type of box that's supposed to hold that information. And then if we go back into Unity after we save and we see that if we hit the play button, 101 now appears. We have correct maths, guys. <laughs> So if you go back to Visual Studio, there's one more thing that I want to show you inside of here. So if you look over in debug.law, you'll see that it actually takes in objects. Now, objects are basically anything inside of C Sharp. Now, when we say that, that everything inside of C Sharp is an object, basically, we're talking about this hierarchy right here. You see, everything that is built down below this system.object is built from this object. So they are both this object and the things above it. For instance, if you go from the system.object to system.value type, the system.value type is built from the system.object. And then you trace it down further, and this right here in 32 is actually built from both of those things. So value type is also an object, but object is not a value type. Int32 is both a value type and an object, but both of these things are not integers. Each one gets more specific and each one up gets more abstract. This object right here is a very abstract thing. Now, some of you might be really confused right now and freaking out. It's okay. You don't need to completely understand this whole hierarchy or anything. What you do kind of want to get though out of this whole thing is that everything is an object inside of our system here everything is an object so an integer right here an object and so is a string and because both of them are objects both of them can get fed into debug.log specifically because debug.log takes in objects you see this is the type that it needs to bring in and because both a string and an integer are both objects you can put both of them into this thing right here right find out inside of here that everything is actually converted to a string representation for display right here right in other words when we're actually putting out whatever you write when it goes to your actual log that isn't actually a string this thing for us converts it into a string it can take in any object but it always puts out a string now now, interestingly enough, there are some hiccups that can happen due to the translator's functionality here. So let's talk about Mr. Translator and what he can do, because really, why do we even need final health? Can't we just add things together down here? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say the player is healed, now has player health, and then let's add to that the heal amount. And then let's just go ahead and take out that line and take out final health, because we don't need those things anymore. So let's go back into Unity and see what happens. Player is healed, now has 1100 health again. <laughs> So if we go back into Visual Studio, let's read through this and figure this out. Because this is the final thing I want you guys to get from this whole tutorial right now. Mr. Translator reads through this. He goes, okay, everything inside of this uh, parentheses is something that they want me to log out, right? And he goes, player is healed, now has. And he goes, okay, string. And then, then he go, and you can see it's a string on there, right? And he goes, okay, then we're going to add something onto this string, right so he goes okay we need to add something into the string and now remember when you take a string and you add something to the end of it what happens is they make a bigger string so right now he's looking at this plus sign from the context of having come from a string top to bottom left to right so he's going left to right here and he hits this plus sign from the context of that string and so he looks at this integer right here right and he goes okay that's an int he's got this plus sign they want me to make a bigger string so he goes okay i'll just convert this for them and he goes he looks at this one and he converts it into a string for us so he basically takes the one right and he goes you can't add an integer onto a string though you have to actually turn it into a string and he goes like this for us and actually at this point right now it's actually become this he's created this from what was on there before so let's separate this out into steps and he's basically done this at this point right he sees this plus sign he goes okay we have a big string to our left and you can actually see the string dot operator plus right there when we have that highlighted and then they have a string left and object 
object right being taken in. And so what they do is they convert this object right here, this integer into an extra amount of health on there. So this actually becomes a hundred for the object and they convert it to a string because you can't make one big string out of a number and a string. And then he takes this whole thing right here and it finally gets transformed into this right here. So that's basically what ends up happening step by step. So, so you can see like when we hit that final health there, that completely fixed this because we just fed in that one final health and then it added that string onto there. Now, just like PEMDAS, just like order of operations in school, you can put things in parentheses and code will run those things inside parentheses first. So if we put a parentheses right here and a parentheses right here, then this becomes an int operator instead. You see int, int operator, because it's actually looking left to right. Here's how Mr. Translator reads this. He goes through the string, he sees a plus, and he goes, okay, we're going to add a string onto that. Then he hits this parentheses right here. He goes, okay, I hit a parentheses. I actually got to do whatever's inside this parentheses before I add this onto that. I'm not going to add player health onto this now because I hit parentheses. So let's do whatever's inside this parentheses first. So he goes player health. And then he looks over here, that's an operator, that's the plus sign operator. And he goes, okay, but this context right here is with integers. This is with the integer type variable. So with that, we do math. So let's do math between player health and heal amount. And then he goes back and then he does the string operator on that whole thing. This goes to one, he doesn't convert it. This goes to 100, doesn't convert it. It goes to 101. Then he's done with it all. So he takes out the parentheses and then he adds that onto it. He converts this to a string and then he makes it into one big string for us like that. Control Z undoes, by the way, does undo. So going back over here to where we just had it inside the parentheses, we save that and then we run it inside of Unity and things work correctly down here on the bottom of the screen. And that's it guys that's all i wanted to get across to you guys in today's video i know that's a lot more information don't worry if you don't get it yet because we're going to be going over it again and we'll be making it a little bit more clear as time goes on i hope that you like the video that you're really enjoying the series so far please hit the like subscribe leave a comment down below i have a patreon down in the description if you want to support the channel further but most of all i'm so so grateful for your time i really am guys i know i say this at the end of every video but i'm really ridiculously grateful. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.